Hi friends. I wanted to show you a new way to make a mask and I've been looking online at all different types of ways to make these masks at home. It's important for us to use these cloth masks to keep everyone else safe in case we actually have the virus and don't know it. And so they're advising that everyone use these masks in public. That doesn't mean you need to wear them in the house or anything like that, but it's good to um, make a number of masks so that you can keep them clean. And I did find a way to make one without those elastics that are really hard to find right now. So that uh, the quarter inch elastics where they make the mask that goes around your ears, very difficult to find. But I have a old college, uh, high school classmate who actually sells um, bungee cord type of material. And this is a smaller size that he has. I'll give you information on where you can find that. And that um, cord can be used instead of the elastic. The other thing too is this particular design, I like it a lot because you could kind of wear it around your neck and then not have to put it down someplace and then lose it. And so, um, I'll show you how to make this, and let me just show you how it is when you have it on. Uh, you just need to push it over your mouth. And ta-da! It's actually really comfortable. I mean, it, I'd rather not have a mask on, but it's not bad, and it actually fits pretty nicely around the face. Uh, the top elastic does go around my ear, but it doesn't hurt because it goes all the way in the back. The other thing about this mask is that um, you can adjust it for each person. Uh, you only have to tie it once, and then once you have it tied, you can actually, because it's elastic, pull it over your head and um, it stays in place. So this is how it looks when it is um, off of your face. Obviously, you wanna keep these clean, and so you would want to have a couple so that you could wash them. Um, I purchased some cotton fabric, and I'll give you the dimensions. I actually used the Rhode Island Hospital um, pattern, and I adjusted it a little bit because where usually uh, the pattern for a lot of them has uh, elastic strap going around so you can pull it over your ears, I actually made a, um, a little space to put this bungee through on each side so I had to make them a little bit wider than the uh, recommended size but I think I got it just right right now the other piece too is the actual bungee type of cord uh, which I'm sure you can find other things around your house that'll work you could use a ribbon all kinds of things I like this because it's stretchy so you could tie it once and then just take it off and on and it it fits you all the time but um, you could purchase, if you wanted to purchase this, I know somebody who sells it by the large spools, and I'll give you that information a little bit later. But uh, in today's day and age, it's all about improvising. And so you just figure out what you can do uh, and with what materials you may have. So anyway, without further ado, let me go downstairs and I'll show you step-by-step step how to make the mask. See you soon. In step one, you'll need to cut pieces of fabric. I, and we use 100% um, cotton, kind of a close weave, good fabric. Cut those pieces nine inches wide by 14 and a half inches long. And I cut all my pieces all at once so I could kind of um, do it in assembly line. Then here's the rope that I've been using, and you could see the information about who to call to uh, buy some of this rope if you're interested. But otherwise, you could try to find something that's already around your house. Now I cut the rope in lengths of about 45 inches, and really this is to accommodate people who might be uh, larger as well. So. Once you tie the rope, you can actually trim it a little bit from there, but 45 inches should be big enough for everybody. 
Next, you're going to make marks on the fabric, first at one and a half inches, then at two and a quarter, then three inches, then four inches, then five inches, then five and three quarter inches. And I did that on both sides of the uh, fabric, on the right side of the fabric. Those will help you to make the pleats later on. Okay, I hope you're ready for the next step. What we're gonna do is using a sewing machine, and I'm really bad at sewing, had to borrow this machine, and had took a while to figure it out. Um, but what we're gonna do is um, fold our piece of cloth in half, and I actually ironed it this way so that it's nice and steady, but um, make the right side in. Okay, so it's folded a half along the longer side. And you could see the marks that I made previously too are on the inside. So from here, you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam on that raw edge away from the fold. And again, I'm really bad at this, but what I learned is that you should back up too so that it doesn't unravel. So I'll go a little bit forward. Then I'll go backwards, and then I'll go all the way down the line. Backwards. There we go. All right, just cut this off. And now you'll turn it right side out. For the next step, you could really do this with pins, but I like to do it with my iron and make the seams nice and flat. So I'll go over to my iron next. Next, I'll iron my piece flat, making sure that the fold is at the top from the top, and by the way, make sure your markings too are um, able to be seen. From the top, pinch on the first marking and then bring it down to the third marking so that the second marking is a flat uh, fold. And then iron that shut. Do the same thing with the next three markings so that you end up with a three pleated piece of cloth. And then I last iron that nice and flat. This takes some practice. So because I ironed these, there's really no need for pins. I didn't have any pins at home, so this worked out. Um, it does take a while to get the pleats. I mean, the idea of pinching the top, moving it over to the um, correct space, ironing it down, but it should look like this. Uh, there's also a really good video on the Rhode Island Hospital site on, on doing that part of it. So you can look at that as well. So now what I'm going to do is uh, just sew my pleats together on each side with a quarter inch seam. Turn it on first. So now what I'm going to do is sew my um, pleats together with a quarter inch seam. Make sure they stay flat. go and I'll do the other side the same way. Okay so next I need a place for my elastic, my bungee cord. And so really what you want to do is just fold this over like this and then sew it. Um, I'm not going to do it with the cord in, it'll be more difficult. I'll just do that. You got to get the right side too. The right side has the nice pleats the wrong side has kind of odd sized pleats. So I'm going to fold it over maybe about a half an inch or so. And 
and then I'll sew this side together. For this, it's really important to back up uh, because you need a very strong uh, seam on this side because it's going to get a lot of tugging. sure you could tell I'm a bad sewer but it still works it's not beautiful but it works it's good to trim all those loose pieces of thread hmm. not too bad I'll do the other side as well So now you actually have the finished piece. The last step is to put the cord through. And so I'm just going to snake this through one side. There's one side that's always easier than the other because of the um, direction of the pleats. And then my other end can go through this side. Like that. Okay. Now this other end you want to leave for now and when the person's ready to fit their mask what they're going to do is put this over their head um, put this up over your ears you want to pull it tight and tie it in the back and you want to tie it kind of snugly because otherwise it'll be flowing off all the time all right and you have to play with it the first time okay and so there you go it's all done um what you want to do is to, like i said tie it snugly and then you can take it off and on all day and it works um, it has an elastic so you can stretch it to get it back over your head and then get it on the next day and look at how much um, more bungee than I really need so if you're making this for women or children you probably don't need the 45 inches you might need a uh, more like three feet but um, I'm making some of these for a custodian so I'm going to leave them long so that they can make them as loose as they want and it doesn't matter uh, what their size is. Anyway, but I'm going to trim these up for me uh, by just cutting the cord at, at where I want it. You don't want to cut it too short because then it can, can unravel. There you have it. Try them any way you'd like to try them. You could decorate them. You can use all different color cloth. Um, but definitely call on my friend to get you that bungee cord if you don't have something at home. Make as many as you can. We want as many as possible for our community and there's plenty of people to give them to. Um, one important thing too is make sure your hands are clean as you do this. Um, if I'm giving this away to my community, I'd want to wash it in hot water. Um, I would wash it without the bungee uh, cord and probably just wash the bungee cord separately. I don't know. i got to try washing these cords and seeing how they do. Um, it's been recommended to air dry them outside in the sun. Um, but you could probably stick the cloth in the... Um, and the dryer as well. Try different things, um, make as many as you can, and give them to all your friends and neighbors. Thanks, bye.